Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am the Omni Viewer, and there's some big news from the land of the rising sun today. For a while, there was suspicion going around that a new trailer for Godzilla King of the Monsters 2019 would be premiering at a Japanese convention over the weekend. Well, we don't have the trailer, not yet anyway, but we do have something just as significant. Now, do you remember how earlier this week there was a report that a particular toy company, whose name I apparently am not pronouncing properly, was going to be revealing the designs for the new monsters, or that is to say the new designs for the classic monsters, at this particular convention? That article got taken down, of course, and was labeled a rumor. But it turns out there was some truth in it. It was just a different company that got the honors. SH Monster Arts revealed the designs for Godzilla, Rodan, Mothra, and King Ghidorah for King of the Monsters. And boy, are they something. I've got a lot to talk about here, so let's dive right in. Let's start with Godzilla. He's the one we're all familiar with by now, and he's also the least altered of the bunch. This is still clearly recognizable as the design we saw in 2014, with a few minor tweaks. The most notable difference, of course, are the dorsal fins, whose shape is now a slightly more in line with the 1954 design. Not exactly, but you can still recognize a couple of familiar shapes. If we put this design side by side with the 2014 design, we can also see there's a slight alteration to the feet. While they are still short and very elephantine in structure, the toes are now spaced slightly further apart, as opposed to in the original design where they were kept fairly close together. The claws are also a bit more pronounced and clearly much sharper. They look a bit more like they were designed for fighting. Not that I think this Godzilla will be using his feet very much in the fight, although who knows. It also appears that the new design's head might be slightly smaller, but that could also just be a result of the angle at which this was taken. Otherwise, there doesn't appear to be that much of a difference in design here. Where things get really interesting is with the other monsters, and I know that's what you all really want to see, so let's dive right in. Of all the monsters, it appears that Rodan has changed the least. This design is clearly hearkening back to his appearance in the original 1956 solo movie, even right down to giving him a slightly reddish color as he appeared in some of the promotional art. His wings are absolutely massive compared to the rest of him. In fact, from the look of it, this Rodan has the largest wingspan in proportion to his body of any previous design. Now, there's been some debate as to whether or not this Rodan was going to have feathers, or perhaps feather-like patterns on his wings. From this angle, we can see that there's a slight hint of that on the edge, but not so much that it looks like he has just bird wings. It's also interesting that he has the diamond-shaped tail. That's a classic feature from the Showa series. The Heisei incarnation, Fire Rodan, had a thinner, more reptilian-looking tail, and the Final Wars Rodan had an arrangement of downy feathers that barely extended far enough to be counted as a tail at all. But this one has that diamond-shaped, aerodynamic-looking tail. From this angle, it's hard to say for certain, but it does look like he has the armored spikes on his abdomen. Not necessarily very pronounced, mind you, and again, it's not quite easy to tell because of the angle, the shading, and the presence of that stand holding him aloft. But even so, it really does look like he might have that feature. Which, you know, that's actually a major part of Rodan's design, so it would have been strange not to include it. Moving on to Monster Zero himself, King Ghidorah looks pretty darn intimidating. Now the first thing I'm sure we will all notice is that this is Ghidorah is standing upright. His wings are fully extended in that classic upright pose, and apparently he needs extra supports to stay upright. However, from other angles we can also see that he's lurched forward which is not the sort of position you'd expect from an upright walking creature. So does that mean this Ghidorah is a biped, or will he spend a good chunk of the movie as a quadruped, walking around with his wings as front legs in similar fashion to a wyvern? My guess would be that the answer is yes. That is to say, he'll probably be doing a little bit of both. The color scheme here is also interesting. 
It might just be a question of lighting, but from certain angles, it appears that his back is slightly green, as opposed to his front, which is the traditional gold color. It's a different choice to be sure, though it's not necessarily distracting. I didn't even really notice it when I first saw these pictures. That of course is if it's actually green. Like I said, this could just be a trick of the lighting because from different angles, the green appears to shift around. So maybe he is completely gold from head to toe. The heads clearly take inspiration from the Heisei incarnation, as indicated by the presence of spikes rather than tufts of fur as well as the lack of the central crescent moon horn that the Showa and GMK versions of Ghidorah traditionally had. Overall, it's a good update to the design. Where things no doubt get divisive is with Mothra. Of the licensed kaiju for the MonsterVerse thus far, Mothra has undergone the most drastic redesign. The wings are still classically Mothra, but when you get to the body, you see the proportions are more akin to what you see in the natural world. A smaller head with a larger abdomen and thorax, more traditional of what you see in the Kingdom Lepidoptery. And this is in addition to especially long limbs, including four limbs reminiscent of a praying mantis. It's hard to tell from these photos, but you can also make out a hint of a thin proboscis. Now of course, this has already started some debate among the fandom. Already you've got people saying, why are people okay with this drastic redesign when they complained about all the drastic redesigns from the anime trilogy? That of course is going off the logical fallacy which assumes that everyone is actually okay with this redesign, but that's beside the point. Speaking as someone who is okay with this redesign, I'll answer the question of why I think this is better than the anime redesigns. First and foremost, it is clearly a moth, and that's half the battle won right there. Remember, part of the reason why the drastic redesigns for the anime Mechagodzilla and anime Ghidorah don't work is because they render the creatures in question unrecognizable. In Mechagodzilla's case, they started with a base that had nothing to do with Godzilla, and then they went ahead and threw that out anyway in favor of something even less recognizable. In regards to Ghidorah, they took one particular design aspect and exaggerated it to such an extent that it still rendered him unrecognizable anyway. What we're looking at right here is clearly a moth. Sure, it's not the rounded, unrealistic looking Mothra that we're used to, but it's still recognizably a moth. Let's be honest here, folks. Mothra is one of those giant monsters whose base design is kind of a common occurrence in the animal world. Just like how every time an especially large gorilla shows up, we immediately say, look out, it's King Kong. Every time we see an especially large butterfly or moth, we say, look out, it's Mothra. Don't deny it, you've done it yourself at some point. Secondly, there are the wings. The shape of the wings, as well as the pattern upon them, lines up pretty well with the Showa version of Mothra, as do the more muted autumn colors. The idea of Mothra being rainbow colored was an invention of the Heisei films. In the Showa films, she had far more earthy tones. And third, we know that these movies are being made by people who respect the source material, so more care went into making these monsters than went into making the anime monsters. That's not even my own personal perspective by this point, it's pretty much a matter of public record. Really, the slightly more realistic and, dare I say, angular, hornet-like design for this Mothra looks an awful lot like the GMK Mothra to my eyes. Whether or not they had that in mind, I don't know. Even so, it's a different design, but it's different in a good way. Think about it, if they went with the more traditional bulbous design for Mothra, would it have necessarily fit in with those other designs? These versions of Godzilla, Rodan, and King Ghidorah look like creatures that could potentially be produced by the natural world, if the natural world ever had an especially bad nightmare after an evening of binge drinking. The original, rounder, dare I say cuter design for Mothra, if placed alongside those other designs, would stick out in a bad way. It would look like a cartoon character suddenly wandered onto the set of a horror movie. And that's not me saying the original design for Mothra is bad. It's me saying the original design for Mothra doesn't fit in the MonsterVerse. This design does fit. And there you have it. That's the big news so far. Will we be getting the new trailer soon? Well, I don't know. There was apparently a tease for that trailer at the convention, but any recordings of it that have been posted have been taken down pretty quickly by Warner Brothers. 
Maybe it'll premiere this weekend. Maybe we really do have to wait for Aquaman. Either way, when it appears, I'll be ready. And of course, as always, you're free to leave your thoughts on these redesigns in the comments section below. Until such time as we meet again, this is the Omniviewer signing off. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it as well as subscribe to the channel for more content of a similar nature. Also, check the description for links to our Twitter, DeviantArt, and Patreon pages, as well as the Amazon link for the novel Operation Red Dragon The Daikaiju Wars Part 1, penned by yours truly. Thank you all, and we appreciate your support.